Welcome back to Simply Cooking with Jed. Today cooking with me is Chef Eisenau. Eis Eiselstein. Eiselstein. <laughs> I knew I wouldn't get it right. Eiselstein. Okay, along with Polite Kid. So, um, Chef is here. Chef is one of the um, um, young and upcoming, well, he's still he's won a few awards um, for, the, for his cheese making. He's an uh, Oswald County artisanal uh, cheese maker, and uh, right here in Oswald County. So, so, Chef, tell us about uh, your cheese, the award-winning cheese, the Five Brothers. Okay, well, um, we're just a new cheese plant. We're, mm -hmm. we're just south of Woodstock, about um, eight kilometers south of the 401. Mm -hmm. And my family has a dairy farm there, and so basically about two years ago, we started making cheese with our own milk. Mm -hmm. And so we started basically making three different types of cheeses. And they're all based on different types of Swiss-style cheeses because... Uh, when I was getting experience in cheese making, I ended up working in Switzerland for a while, and I worked for a Swiss cheesemaker in BC for a year, and so a lot of my influence in learning how to make cheese was Swiss. So you've been around. Yep, been to a couple of places. <laughs> um, so you mentioned our award-winning cheese, so um, fortunately for us, this past April, they have what they call the Canadian Cheese Grand Prix. Yeah. So every two years, it's a national competition for all cheeses in Canada. Uh, it's got to be cow's milk, and it has to be 100% Canadian milk. And um, our cheese, our Five Brothers cheese, won in the firm cheese category. Nice. And firm cheese is just kind of based on the moisture content of the cheese. Right. And so it's actually, the Five Brothers is based on a Swiss-style cheese called Appenzeller. And right. Appenzeller is not a real well-known Swiss cheese, but it comes from a certain province in Switzerland called Appenzell. And uh, I flavor. make it... Yeah, I make it similar to that type of cheese, using those same practices. Nice. So today we're going to make some uh, uh, cheese pieces using some of your cheeses here. And then we're going to make a, a taco salad and uh, uh, using, again, using one of your other cheese. And so right now I'm going to get Paulette down. Paulette, Paulette Kid is, um, we, have a ca we run a cafeteria in Notre Dame School and, and Paulette does most of the baking and most of the, uh, um, the cookies and everything that has to do with flour and stuff. So I'm going to have her make uh, the, the, uh, the cheese uh, biscuits with you, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to step back and I'm going to watch you guys. Okay. Hi, Shep. What? So this is something that we make for the kids often, although in the school we use whole wheat flour. I don't like white flour, <laughs> but anyhow, we're using it today. So uh, I'm going to get you to grate that cheese. We need about a cup for, okay. for this recipe, and I'll mix up the dry ingredients. So I'm just putting in some white flour. So that's about what? A, a cup about, of two cups? Three cups. Three, three cups, cups of flour. flour yeah. And that makes about? This makes about 15 to 20 biscuits, depending on size, how big we yeah. make them. I'm putting in a little bit of sea salt, a little bit of baking powder. And, and we've got the oven preheated uh, at 350. Yep. And cream of tartar. I'm not really sure what that does, but Anybody the recipe calls for it. I always like to whisk uh, the dry ingredients together before I add anything else because then you don't get a lump of baking powder or baking soda in your biscuit when you bite into it because it really doesn't taste that good. That's a fancy cheese grater there, Chef. It's not too fancy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe entire. Yeah. So it has its own measuring uh, thing at c uh, container underneath. Is that what it is? Yeah. Nice. That's good. Now I'm going to add in some butter. I have a cup or three quarters of a cup of butter and it's just out of the fridge so it's nice and cold. It's better to bake the biscuits with cold butter. Why is that? Because as my good friend Jed taught me. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you explain it? That would be better. Well the little little frozen uh, or oh, well, little cold pockets of uh, um, lumps of butter is going to, is when you bake it, uh, it's going to melt and create this little air pocket in the, in the cheese biscuits, um, in any biscuits, mm -hmm. to make it fluffy, right? Yeah. So. so I'm just, I'm using this pastry cutter to get it to uh, just chop up the butter a little bit, but we still want little pea-sized chunks in there. Yeah. And, and don't mix it, you don't need to mix it too well, right? Right. Yeah. You want it to be sort of rustic looking. Yeah. So. Looks homemade. Homemade, yes. <laughs> no, don't, don't be mistaken as homey. <laughs> <laughs> Homely. Homely. <laughs> okay, and then I'm going to put in a cup and a half of milk. Uh, we're using 2% milk here. And I'm just going to mix that a little bit. Can we use cream? Yeah, cream would be good. I like fat. <laughs> <laughs> it tastes good. <laughs> and then we're going to add the cheese in there. 
I should really be using a spoon, not a whisk here. Can we go with Yeah, some? can you grab me a, I think there's a wooden spoon over there. So do you do much baking? Me? Yeah. No, no, don't bake. Well now, this will be in your day. new favorite recipe. <laughs> we do like to cook though. Um, yeah. And do you especially use cheese with a cheese. Lot? Yeah. All the time with cheese. Good. Um, I was married about nine months ago, and I grew up on a dairy farm. And so, while growing up in a dairy farm, meat was kind of the essential item in any meal that we were making. Yeah. And my wife is now vegetarian, mm -hmm. and so I kind of had to relearn how I cook. And cheese is an awesome way yeah. to still get a lot of flavor, a lot of protein in your yeah. food, and then also keep um, keep it vegetarian. Yeah. Um, do you only do cow's milk cheese? Do you do goat's milk at all? So we basically make three types of cow's milk cheeses. Um, this is the Handeck, so it's a very firm uh, Swiss mountain-style cheese. But we also make a cheese out of sheep milk. We use sheep milk from a local sheep farmer. He lives about five kilometers south of us. Mm -hmm. And um, we produce that cheese for him. And then we make a second sheep milk cheese actually for an Amish farmer that lives near Almer. And uh, what's really cool about that is he actually still brings us his sheep milk in milk cans. Mm, so it's kind cool. of pretty neat. Yeah. Nice. So do you have a favorite that you make? My favorite changes. Um, I, <laughs> I, eat ridiculous, <laughs> I eat ridiculous amounts of cheese, and so you need to kind of keep things fresh. Yeah. So I kind of cycle through different cheeses. Um, lately, we've been experimenting with uh, some other types of cheese. So one is a brie, mm -hmm. and so I'm nice. eating a lot of that just because it's something new for yeah. me. Nice. Yeah. Uh, we were talking uh, just before the show about uh, lactose intolerance and, and eating cheese, and you were s making some suggestions about types that would have mm -hmm. almost no lactose in it. Could you explain that? So in general, the more firm the cheese, the less lactose will be in it. Mm -hmm. So in general, cheese is very, very little lactose to begin with. But a softer cheese, like a brie, for example, a younger cheese will tend to have a little bit, whereas a very firm aged cheese, like our Handeck, for example, which we're using right now, mm -hmm. And it's about a year old. It's very firm. It's almost firm like a Parmesan. Mm. It'll have tiny, tiny amounts of lactose. Yeah. And so if you're not extremely sensitive to, to lactose, you're intolerant but not super, super sensitive, mm -hmm. often firm cheeses are a much better um, way to go. Yeah, so that's good to know. So mm -hmm. lacto if you're lactose intolerant, you can't break down that lactose and mm -hmm. you have gastrointestinal issues when you eat cheese. So that's good. Substitute. And so also, oh, sorry. sorry. So you, you meant uh, when people are eating cheese with lactose uh, uh, intolerance, uh, they, they could be just allergic to the milk product. Uh, the protein. Yeah. Protein. So what would happen mm -hmm. sometimes is people think that they're, or they've never been tested really. So right. they they know that they have a reaction to eating dairy products, and so they assume that they're lactose intolerant. Right. Sometimes that could be an allergy to milk protein, mm -hmm. which cheese is going to have in it no matter what. Right. And right. so it doesn't matter what kind of cheese you those cheeses aren't going to go well with you. Right. Right. Um, right. One, one alternative though, like goat's milk, sheep milk cheeses um, are, are different. And so most people who are intolerant to some of the cow's milk cheeses are, have no problem with sheep milk cheeses. Is this a different protein, you mean? Yeah, the so proteins are yeah. different. And um, often people look at goat's milk cheeses, and some, some types of goat milk cheese can turn people off. But sheep milk cheeses are a nice alternative oh. as well. Oh, that's good to know. All that's right. great, Chef. OK. So we're going to put this in the oven for about 15 minutes. We'll just keep an eye on it. And be yummy, right. lactose-free right. biscuit. Thank you, Paulette. So, so this is a cheese biscuit that we make. So when we come back, we'll use uh, the, the cheese to make some taco. And I'm going to give you a, a vegetarian alternative uh, so you can cook for your wife. Sounds good. All right, we'll be right back after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to Simply Cooking with Jet. Today, cooking with me is Shep and uh, Paulette Kid. So, we're going to do some taco salad here. So it's a quite simple, uh, easy one, a uh, couple of steps uh, uh, taco salad. Now, I'm just going to brown some uh, uh, medium ground beef, not lean, but medium, because Paulette says it's, it's uh, good to have a little bit of fat um, in, in the. Uh, Oh. Yeah, it's a bit of a controversy, but there are a lot of nutritionists who believe that animal protein and animal fat, the saturated fat, are, have some healing qualities about them. So mm -hmm. um, I include it in my diet. It's not in and, every and meal, but and look at me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Shab, there's, there's a lot of uh, fat too, right, in the uh, in the cheese making. 
Yeah, cheese, you know, cheese in general, sometimes people come in and they say, oh, can we have a low-fat cheese? <laughs> so that's a little bit of an oxymoron. Yeah. Yeah. They do make low-fat cheese. I don't know how they make that because <laughs> in cheese you have three basic items. You have protein, you have fat, and you have moisture. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, our Five Brothers cheese, for example, is 30% milk fat. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Shab, you teach a uh, cheese making course, right? Yeah, and, we, and we, we can we do that. We can do that at, uh, one day at your at your um, your factory or yeah. your workshop there, right? So. so yeah, so once in a while we'll we'll have a group of people, usually two, three, four people, and they'll actually make cheese with me for mm -hmm. the day, and they'll actually get to know kind of how the cheese is being made and um, what yeah. all the different steps are in the process. And we can just go to your website and sign up for it. And yeah, basically it'll it'll tell you to send an email to to an address there, which. Because there's only two of us at the cheese plant, it's going to go to me, uh -huh. and then we can organize the time that works out. And how long does that take? How, how long is the process? About, about five, six hours? Yeah, so typically cheese making takes about eight hours until you actually have this wheel of cheese that's getting squeezed together. Mm -hmm. um, it's got to sit for another, say, year or six months or eight months to get the proper flavors. But uh -huh. the initial part is about eight hours, and then we skip some of the boring stuff with the cheese maker, people that work with me, yeah. the first things, you know, you wait and you wait and you wait. So yeah. usually the day takes about six to seven hours. So what are you doing in between? It's just a lot of wine? <laughs> <laughs> well, what I normally do is, I mean, whenever you're producing food, everything has to be clean all the time. So a, lot so cleaning stuff. a lot of cleaning. Um, yeah. When people are making cheese with me, we avoid that part. I do it all in advance. <laughs> and then we'll... Well, well, you spend don't some time. Clean. No, <laughs> you should. You should teach them how to clean as well. Yeah. yeah. So right now I'm just chopping up some garlic here, just crushing it, and then now I'm putting it in, in the uh, in the beef. And now we're just gonna fry this up a little bit. So for the taco salad, I have some pre pre mixed here. Really convenient. Food Land has all this uh, pre-packaged stuff that you can you can get, and um, and we we just have to mix it up later on. So it's it's a romaine mix, and we're just gonna fry up some some of the beef here. Now, even even though this is uh, medium ground beef here, it's actually not very fatty. Um, so we need to add some fat to it. <laughs> yeah, we can we can add some grapeseed oil in there, but uh, I think I think there's enough enough juice in there. And then we use Catalina dressing uh, to to mix it up in there. Now for vegetarian option, we have the kidney beans, right? So you can you can add that and and um, just use the kidney beans as a protein for your for your own um, uh, recipe, mm -hmm. and then. Um, but we're going to do some beef here, and then we're going to crush in some Cool Ranch taco chips <laughs> and, uh, at the end to mix mm -hmm. it up. It's a really nice and um, uh, refreshing summer salad. And do you I, always I use kidney beans? Could you use other? You like could use other bean chickpeas if you like. Uh, yeah. Any beans that's already pre-cooked. Black beans would be good. Black beans, yeah. um, um, turtle beans, Romano. Uh, Romano beans. Yeah. Yeah. I don't do beans really well because uh, you know it tends to add a little bit more to me. <laughs> so, um, so I, I like it without the beans, mm -hmm. but uh, but for people that like beans, um, so this, this is almost done. I can really smell that cheese from the cheese biscuits right mm -hmm. now. It is such a nice aroma, right? And um, like I said, we use that cheese for for our cheese biscuits, and the kids love it at the school. And um, I, I really thank you for for making that uh, that flavor. It's uh, what is it? The hen? The hen deck is hen what deck. we call it. The cheese that we use in the cheese biscuits. Uh huh. And right now, if you can grate the five brothers, we're going to use our award-winning cheese for the for the taco salad that we're, we're going to use. Okay. Nice Go for it. Yeah. Now, Paula, with the uh, with this nutritional value for uh, or Calorie counting, I guess I should say, for for this taco salad, it's not a whole lot, isn't it? Other than natural fat that we have. Yeah, I really don't. I'm not an advocate of calorie counting. I don't. I think that really the 
the type of food that you're eating is much more important than, than the calorie count. Right. If you're eating whole foods, uh, which all of this is, you know, these are, are all whole natural foods. There's anything really processed there. I mean, you could even go so far as to make your own Catalina dressing, which would be even, you know, even better in terms of nutrition, right? You right. Have no preservatives. So, mm -hmm. in my opinion, it's just better to eat whole foods. You don't necessarily need to pay attention to the calorie count. Right. Yeah. So. Wow. Okay. So actually, Paulette does uh, nu nutrition uh, consulting mm -hmm. uh, on the side and. Um, I've been getting a lot of free tips from her, so look at look at me. <laughs> <laughs> You're really healthy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, all right, so Almost we done. this ground beef is done. So we're just gonna let it cool off on the side there, and then later on we're gonna mix it in with the uh, with the lettuce, and then uh, and Chef is is grating up. So, um, we need about a, a cup should be fine. So a little bit there. Yeah, sure. And then uh, that we just add it in and toss it with the. Uh, Catalina dressing, and um, and then we're going to crunch up some um, um, some of the uh, cool cool ranch uh, uh, tortilla chips. Now, these are the wax uh, on the outside, right? Can you eat that? So you you might have seen me cutting it off before yeah. I grated it up. Yeah. Um, on our Five Brothers cheese and also on our hand deck, it's actually not a wax, it's a natural coating. Oh, nice. So it's a bacteria that grows on the outside of the cheese. Okay. If you smell it, it's got a very distinct smell. Mm -hmm. um, some people might not even like the smell of it. <laughs> but it, it helps add flavor to the cheese and then it helps protect the cheese. Right. And basically that develops because we wash the cheese with salt water every other day. Wow. And uh, over a period of about three months or so, it actually grows on the outside. Now when you're just eating pieces of cheese, like you're more than welcome to to try and eat the outside, it's completely edible because it's just a, it's sure. a, a culture that's been growing. Yeah. But um, for for shredding cheese and stuff like that, it, it can tend to be a little bit drier because it's on the outside of the cheese and it's been sitting there for about eight months. And so I would so typically you can actually eat it then. Yeah, typically I would shave it off when I'm when I'm grating. But if yeah. you're just eating it with with chips and um, so I mean uh, with crackers, you can eat it if you prefer. I would say you know maybe half the people do, half people don't. It's kind okay. of a a personal choice. Okay, I'm gonna try a little piece with with the uh, with the with the outside. And um, so, we make another cheese. It's a younger cheese called Oxford's Harvest, and that one is about six weeks old. And because it's younger, the outside or the rind, which is what you call the outside of the cheese, tends to be softer and more subtle. I really like it. And uh, on the Oxford Harvest, I would recommend that you eat it because it helps add to the overall flavor of the cheese. Mm. Nice. It's very good. Okay, when we come back from the break, we're going to toss up some uh, taco salad and the cheese pieces should be ready. And Paula is going to do a really nice smoothie for, uh, for dessert that goes with the meal. All right? Nice. So we'll be right back after the break. Welcome back to Simply Cooking with Jed along with Paulette Kidd and today cooking with us is Chef. And Chef, I'm going to get you to toss some salad here. And we got some ground beef that we have browned up before. And if you don't want to use this, uh, you can just go with the, uh, the beans, okay? And you would just go with them cold? Yes. And this is, I already rinsed it in, uh, uh, with, with the hot water, and then here I can toss it up. And your cheese there, you can use the tongue if you want. Yum. And then Catalina dressing. Okay. And then for the final touch, I'm going to crush up some. Cool Ranch. It has to be Cool Ranch. It has, to be. It has to be Cool Ranch. Okay. No. Are it's, you promoting Frito Lay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's my it's my favorite. So that's that's it. And then we're just gonna uh, plate it. And then uh, the, I'm gonna grab the cheese because good job tossing the salad. <laughs> and and if you like, you can certainly. Put a little bit more cheese on it. Could never have enough cheese, right? <laughs> nope. <laughs> okay. Never too much cheese. And then the 
cheese biscuits. Look at that. <coughs> nice cheese biscuits. So we're gonna have to taste that later on. Mm -hmm. And Paula is gonna do a quick um, smoothies yeah. uh, to complement with this meal. Yeah, we're Go gonna for it. do a layered smoothie. You so got one minute. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Do you want to help me assemble this? Or sure. Okay. What do you want me to do? You can peel the banana for me. Sure. I usually put banana in the smoothie because it adds a nice mm -hmm. sweetness, but you can use any fruit that you want. We're doing a green smoothie. It may not look green when we're done. I never never know. It really depends. <laughs> <laughs> depends on what fruit you use, but I usually put in about 60% fruit and then 40% uh, green leafy vegetables. So. And I noticed that you did not cut out the stem. I did not. I leave that in there. I wash them really good. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, it's just another another, another vegetable, green. right? Yes. Another green in there. Yes. So just put a handful in. If you want to no, throw the banana in. Nothing goes to waste. No, Should we right. throw in the banana peel too? Mm, I never tried that. I don't know. <laughs> there might be some medicinal quality to that too. Yeah, I don't probably. know. Probably. You never know, know, right? So you, if you want this to be a, a dairy smoothie, you can add yogurt in or, or um, a bit of milk. Yeah, do you want to? Um, no, that, that one's going in here. If, oh, okay. If you want to do that. Uh, and you can put a little bit of, of dairy in there or you can put in a bit of water. Um, I'm just going to put in just a little bit of apple juice, not very much. And then we'll whiz that up. And then you can put it in the, uh, in the, in the fridge to, to make it cold? Or you can, or you can use frozen. Ice frozen. Uh, ice cubes. Uh, yeah, you can put ice cubes in it too. Mm -hmm. This thing's a little finicky. Um, sure, why not? I'm just gonna sneak this. There we go. There we go. Is it coming out? There we go. So, what's your guess? What colors are gonna be? Looks pretty purple. Right? Yeah. So if you, if you use a lighter um, fruit, like if you use grapes and bananas, then it's going to tend to look more green, but mm -hmm. so you can puree that. Okay. Do I need some um, apple juice in here? Uh, not unless it needs liquid. If it's, I think it, it'll probably be okay. I noticed there's only two cups. Where's mine? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I should say, where's yours? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was waiting for. Okay. So it might be a little tricky pouring it out of here, but we'll see. So one will be a little more pink, and the other one will be a little more orange. But so then you can stir it up or leave it like that, and you get a swirl of the orange in there. Um, if you use frozen fruit, then it will it will obviously be thicker. It'll almost be more like a milkshake, but um, either way is good. If it, today might be good to have frozen. It's so hot outside, mm -hmm. but um, yeah. So there you go. All right, so we have the taco salad, the cheese biscuits, and the smoothies for, for, for your cooking ideas. So thank you for watching Simply Cooking with Jed, and thank you, Chef, for coming on the, on the um, um, on the show, and now uh, we can uh, dig in and try out. And thank you again. Thanks for having Thanks me. Thanks for watching.